Good afternoon and welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. And thank you kindly for stopping by. Let me start with some home thoughts. Nothing unusual, just a normal night at the Old Mallow Treehouse. This is from Jambo magazine. And look at the stars in that photograph. And as Rumi said, we come spinning out of nothingness, scattering stars like dust. Staying with Jambo magazine, how to end an evening at Barana Conservancy, that view via battered underscore lens. I went there a few years ago with my youngest daughter, Hannah, and we had a lovely time. Um, and it's actually quite high uh, in altitude terms, lower on the plains and Baranas up. And it has spectacular scenery and we rode horses um, for about a couple of hours and that was just amazing because it allows you to get very close to giraffes and animals like that. At the moment of vision, the eyes see nothing. The moment of vision is, in essence, a non-linear thing. It's a moment of deep insight. And uh, President Trump obviously was absolved of all charges earlier uh, today. Remember Tim, the 50-year-old bull elephant, the icon of Amboseli, and one of Africa's largest and most magnificent elephants. He is dead, died of natural causes, which is good, because he had the most enormous tusks, known as, you know, a super tusker. This image is from Amboseli Elephants by Jambo magazine. David Yarrow, who is a renowned photographer, has been photographing Tim for quite a number of years. I will never forget the day I was fortunate enough to come face to face with Tim, Africa's most celebrated elephant. This is my favorite photograph of Tim by David Yarrow strolling through a yellow fever tree forest in southern Kenya. Stay safe, mate. It's been awesome. I took this picture of this extraordinary group of elephants two days ago in Amboseli. I'm hugely privileged. The front row is a colossal front row and is led by the world's biggest elephants, Tim and Craig. And finally, I'm very saddened to hear this morning that Tim, probably the world's most famous elephant, has passed away at the good old age of 50. We've had many encounters with elephants and they're the most incredible creatures. I remember being surrounded by 120 in the Sava. <clears throat> and the elephants in the Sava are really quite wild, unlike the ones in the Masai Mara, which are much more used to human contact and therefore come much closer to you. Okay, let's return to the uh, subject du jour, which is the coronavirus. <clears throat> Coronavirus crisis shows China's governance failure. New York Times, Wuhan's mayor blamed higher-ups, a senior disease control official blamed layers of bureaucracy, a top government expert blamed the public, the people he said simply didn't understand what he told them. That's the best one, isn't it? So many officials have denied responsibility that some online users joke they are watching a passing the buck competition. It's tossing the wok in Chinese. Too many of its officials have become political apparat chicks, fearful of making decisions that anger their superiors and too removed and haughty when dealing with the public to admit mistakes and learn from them. The most important issue this outbreak exposed is the local government's lack of action and fear of action, said Zhu Kaizen, a best-selling author who's famous for his novels that explore the intricate workings of China's bureaucratic politics. 
They don't want to be the first to speak up. They wait for their superiors to make decisions and are only accountable to their superiors instead of the people. The Chinese government appears to be aware of the problem the Communist Party's top leadership acknowledged in a meeting on Monday <coughs> that the epidemic was a major test of China's system and capacity for governance. As the virus spreads, officials in Wuhan and around the country withheld critical information, played down the threat and rebuked doctors who tried to raise the alarm. A reconstruction of the diseases spread by the New York Times showed that by not issuing earlier warnings, and this is the risk with the virus because of its escape velocity and ex uh, its exponential characteristics, the Chinese government potentially lost the window to keep the disease from becoming an epidemic. The outbreak has undermined the myth that the Chinese political elites win assignments and promotion merely on merit. China has sold the system as its own unique innovation. People in China are now questioning that premise. They are focusing much of their anger on Xi Jinping, China's top leader, and the person many blame for creating a culture of fear and subservience within the Chinese government. After Xi disappeared from public in recent days, some social media users began asking euphemistically, where is that person? The wok tossing in China stems in part from the tension between the technocrats who hold a large number of positions with China's provincial and national disease control centers and the political cadres, the mayors, governors and the provincial party secretaries. The outbreak and lack of disclosure suggests that the political cadres are winning. Listen to this, Chinese officials are spending as much as one third of their time on political studying lessons, a lot of which are about Mr. Xi's speeches. The Chinese people may be paying the price, the failures span the system. Zhu Xinwang, Wuhan's mayor, said he didn't disclose the scale and the danger of the epidemic earlier because he needed authorization from higher up. In a series of online notices issued between December 31st and January 17, local officials disclosed they were treating pneumonia patients, but didn't say when or how many. The National Health Commission the ministry with the authority to declare an epidemic emergency didn't issue its own notice about the outbreak until January 19. The most important comfort, he added, came from Party Secretary Xi Jinping. If they can rearrange the order in their hearts, Mr. Zhu said, we'll see a very different governance style. In a social media post headlined The Formalism Under the Mask, the author wrote, most people in the system don't do things to solve problems. They do things to solve responsibilities. I know before long this country will go back to being a peaceful, prosperous society. We will hear many people screaming how proud they are of its prosperity and power. A Wuhan resident wrote on the social media site Weibo. But after what I've witnessed, I refuse to watch the applause and commendation. 7th of October, I wrote about the 70th anniversary of the CCP. Longing on a large scale makes history. And that was the sort of epitome of the power projection that the Chinese Communist Party was seeking to portray. Unstoppable force, that kind of thing. But obviously this article is saying that force is quite brittle under the surface and this coronavirus has exposed the brittleness in the system. 27th of May I was describing how in one fell swoop Xi Jinping was president for life and that he was on a pedestal and is faced with the strongman conundrum the political brand will not permit a retreat let alone a surrender. I was quoting Ecclesiastes, vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. There is no remembrance of former things. 
nor will there be any remembrance of later things yet to be among those who come after. And as Vivian Shu said to the Guardian, if the situation improves, he will take the credit. If it worsens, the blame will be pinned on Li Kekwang. 27th of January, I was quoting that Groucho Marx a quote, who are you going to believe, me or your own eyes? And I said, they held back on reacting in time. And then they got to that moment when they couldn't hide it anymore. 3rd of February, I wrote again, it's a 17-page article. I was touching on a number of issues on the coronavirus, the non-linearity, the exponential risks. In Wuhan, one person has died for every 23 infections reported. That number drops to one in 50 nationally. And outside mainland China, one death has been recorded per 114 confirmed cases. In an outbreak, you really have to interpret fatality rates with a very sceptical eye because often it's only the very severe cases that are coming to people's attention. It's very hard to say those numbers represent anything like the true burden of infection. Adalja, who estimates current fatality rates are likely below 1%. As of Tuesday, 24,551 cases have been confirmed globally. A 1% fatality rate would put total cases at over 49,000, based on the current death toll of 492. As the denominator is growing in terms of case numbers and case fatality goes down and down, you start to realize it's everywhere. Preliminary analysis by C underscore Althaus of the international um, uh, virus suggests 4% of confirmed cases resulted in death. Not only, note, only some infections are confirmed, so proportion of infections that result in death could be much lower. Now, very interesting Taiwan News reported that Tencent may have accidentally leaked real data on the Wuhan virus deaths. Tencent over the weekend, so we're some that days behind us now, seems to have inadvertently released what is potentially the actual number of infections and deaths which were astronomically higher than official figures. On late Saturday evening, February the 1st, <clears throat> Tencent on its webpage titled Epidemic Situation Tracker showed confirmed cases of the novel coronavirus in China as standing at 154,023, 10 times the official figure at the time. It listed the number of suspected cases as 79,808, four times the official figure. The number of cured cases was only 269, well below the official number that day of 300. Most ominously, the death toll listed was 24,589, vastly higher than the 300 officially listed that day. Netizens also noticed that each time the screen with the large numbers appears, it shows a comparison with the previous day's data, which demonstrates a reasonable incremental increase, much like comparisons of official numbers. This has led some netizens to speculate that Tencent has two sets of data, the real data and process data. Some are speculating that a coding problem could be causing the real internal data to accidentally appear. Others believe that someone behind the scenes is trying to leak the real numbers. This is a February 1st chart showing the higher numbers on the left, the chart showing official numbers on the right. This is from Taiwan News. And as I said, the death toll was listed at the weekend at 24,589. And 27th of January, I said the number is massively undercounted by my, by my reckoning. 
A Harvard epidemiologist says that it's likely as many as 100,000 are already infected. Um, we don't capture all of those through the case reporting we have. We can assume that this is growing at somewhat of an exponential rate and it will continue increasing in scale. Chinese TV research team at Zhejiang University has found an effective drug to treat people with the new coronavirus. This is via first squawk. Reuters, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, based in the city where the outbreak is believed to have originated, said it applied to patent the use of remdesivir, an antiviral drug developed by Gilead to treat the virus. And 27th of Jan, I said some are even pointing the finger at that Wuhan Institute of Virology, BSL-4 laboratory, and surmising that the only explanation left is artificial DNA modification, possibly by that Institute of Virology. Then Northman Trader tweets, funny that last week Zero Hedge got banned over an HIV-linked article, and now two drug companies are offering their HIV drugs for help with the virus. 3rd of February, there is no doubt there is a novel sequence in the coronavirus. We confirm this via sequence alignment. Here's the dot plot. Darunavir is JN. J. HIV drug Persister, Dr. Paul Stoffels, told us the company was investigating whether its HIV drugs could help against the coronavirus. Um, and then uh, speaking to non-linearity and exponential risks, Taleb was explaining to an option trader why virus comparisons are inadequate you must never compare deltas when gammas are very different. This coronavirus has a high gamma. Exhibit nonlinear and exponential characteristics. Total victims reported are now 20,000. When we did this piece, the number was 1,000. He's referring to exponential equals multiplicative processes. More than pneumonia, the potential occurrence of multiple organ failure in the coronavirus infection. This is research from SSRN, and that would confirm why people just seem to fall dead in the street in some of the videos I've watched. ACE2 also extensively expressed in the vascular endothelial cells of the heart, kidney, liver, intestine, and testes, etc. In other words, the new coronavirus may probably intrude on any tissues or organs as long as the needed number of ACE2 is available. Therefore, once exposed to the coronavirus, e.g. through the blood or the other body fluid, these organs may also get affected, especially for those the receptor has the direct acting control. Hong Kong is to require all travellers entering from mainland China to go into quarantine for 14 days, as Carrie Lam finally invokes special powers um, under the Prevention and Control of Disease Ordinance. UK poised to ban all flights from China and block foreign citizens from entering UK if they have been to the country in the past 14 days amid a furious backlash over coronavirus shambles as global death toll hits 493. Italy, Australia, New Zealand have taken similar steps. Authorities in France and Germany, potentially the EU as a whole, are also considering the move. But that's very dramatic advice from the Foreign and Commonwealth Office as well, urging all Brits currently in China, thought to be around 30,000 people, to leave the country. The epidemic is still severe in Hubei province, but society didn't see chaos. That's Hu, Global Times. Cities of the province are functioning and the epidemic control work has been further stepped up. Hope the inflection point will come soon. And that took me back to Paul Virilio in his book City of Panic described the city reconstructed through the use of mediatized panic. Um, 
leave streets of Shanghai, a city of 24 million people, deserted. Uh, Paul Virilio again, with every natural disaster, health scare, and malicious rumor, now comes the inevitable information bomb. Live feeds take over real space, and technology connects life to the immediacy of terror, the ultimate expression of speed. Groucho Marx, who are you going to believe? Me or your own eyes. <clears throat> Moving on, Vodafone's CEO says he's decided to take Huawei from its core at Vodafone. As I said in December 2018, Huawei is the bloodstream of Africa's telecom infrastructure. How this plays out in Africa, I said, is now an above-the-radar issue, an important market for Huawei is Africa. Vodafone CEO welcomes UK decision on Huawei's as limited financial exposure is already largely compliant. Rover 829 says limited amount of Huawei in the core in Europe will do it over a five year period, will cost 200 million euros. Let's move on to the currency markets. Euro dollar just below 110, dollar index 98.279, Japanese yen 10. 993, Swiss franc 0.9735, the pound 129.86, the Australian dollar 0.6745, India rupee 71.22, South Korean won 1182.41, Brazilian real 4.2354, Egyptian pound 15.78, South African rand 14.75. Dollar index, that's been firming, um, flight to quality. Euro dollar, just below 110, the figure. Um, uh, Balagis, who I follow on social media, says the long coronavirus trade is VR, X-rays, drones, antivirals, CT scans, autonomy, diagnostics, face masks, remote work, telepresence, bioinformatics. Short coronavirus, travel, Tinder, Grinder, hotels, Airbnb, airlines, in-person, blue cities, restaurants, conferences, digital nomads, Uber, but not Uber Eats. Coronavirus has so far caused three cruise ships to be quarantined. You'd expect bookings to collapse, if not cruise ship share prices. That's from R RMK out front. 6,000 in Italy, Carnival. 3,700 in Japan, Princess, 1,800 in Hong Kong, Genting Dream. And this is interesting. Ten more people on a cruise ship off Japan's coast have tested positive for the new coronavirus, the health minister said, raising the number of infections detected on the boat to 20, and they've tested 273 people. Which tells me the cruise ship is the ultimate petri dish, and therefore an aeroplane must be quite similar, except you're not in it for as many hours as you're on a cruise ship. Commodity markets, oil is down $10 per barrel so far this year. We estimate about $8 of the drop is due to weak demand related to concerns about the impact of the coronavirus on activity in China. We're currently at 51.80. And I think we're going to fall quite sharply again. The Chinese announced a reduction in tariffs, and I think that gave the market a fillip. Gold, 1559. I like it if you can get it around 1550. Sub Saharan Africa with little policy room. African central banks sound debt alarm. This is Bloomberg. Central bankers in Africa are joining a chorus of voices, which include the IMF, who are worried about surging public debt levels on the continent. Nigerian Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefile warned last month rapidly rising debt and a lack of fiscal buffers could threaten economic growth. Same week, Kenyan Central Bank Governor Patrick Njirogi said in an interview his country is running out of room to increase its credit load. They are sending a warning to policymakers that if your debt levels become unsustainable, then it is going to have consequences on growth and the financial environment, and that raises monetary risks, said Colin Coleman, formerly of Goldman Sachs. 
Public debt as a percentage of GDP in Sub-Saharan Africa has doubled to more than 50% since 2008, IMF data shows. While that's below the average for emerging market and developing economies, the continent's debt ratio rose faster than that of any other country grouping over the period. The African Development Bank is less worried and said last week it didn't see a systemic debt crisis on the continent. Higher debt has clipped the wings of monetary policy, said Andrew Roche, Managing Director at Paris-based financial consultancy FinexM. In Nigeria, if the governor wants to lower interest rates, that would weaken the currency and increase the debt burden, which creates another set of problems when you're trying to find a solution. Faced with limited monetary space, Nigeria's central bank has stepped in to help cover the government's widening fiscal gap with cash advances worth 2.5% of GDP, which are more expensive than debt funded on the domestic market. Moody's Investor Service warned against opaque and costly options to finance the government's rising debt burden when it changed the outlook on the country's credit rating to negative in December. Central banks will be expected to print money and become more activist in policy orientation. 9th of December, I said it's time to big up the dosage of quaaludes. Moody's Investor Services downgraded Nigeria to negative and we learnt that foreign investors are propping up the Naira to the tune of $16 billion via short-term certificates. I said everyone knows how this story ends. When the music stops, everyone will dash for the exit and the currency will collapse, just like it's collapsing in Lusaka as we speak. Then I was referencing uh, Dr. Njirogi, who said the central bank has warned the national treasury. Central bank is of the opinion that aiding by printing funds to pay debt will be a zero-sum game. 14th of October, it's, I said, it seems to me that we're at a pivot moment and we can keep regurgitating the same old mantras like a stuck record. And if we do that, this turns Aussie Mandias. <clears throat> Turning to Ethiopia, we just received the results of the four suspected cases for the novel coronavirus and they're all negative. There's no confirmed cases in Ethiopia. Full press release to follow from the Ministry of Health, said the Ministry of Health, uh, the Minister Lia Tadesse. They have a heads of state meeting of the African Union this weekend in Addis. I wouldn't like to be one of those heads of state. Ethiopian operates many international flights and suspending flights only to China won't be an immunity to print to prevent the spread of the disease. This is the chief executive officer of Fly Ethiopian. Currently operates a total of 35 flights per week to five gateways in China, Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Chengdu and Hong Kong. Um, Ethiopian operates many international flights and suspending flights only to China won't be an immunity to prevent the spread of the disease. The only solution is to make the necessary care for passengers and staff. I would be interested to know what care they're doing. National flag carriers undertaking strengthened measures against the virus at destinations where it serves and Bole International Airport. As I've said before, Bole is the epicenter of China-Africa hyper-connectedness. And I think they're playing very fast and loose with Ethiopian brand and a lot more. We are ready for the coronavirus as a country that was nearly wiped out by Poloni, Daniel Marven. There is no single machine in Zimbabwe to test for the coronavirus. Doctors say if the virus hit Zim, it will wipe out people, Daddy Hope. South African all shares up 0.6% year to date. Dollar Rand at 14.75, but I think the Rand could come under enormous pressure. Egyptian pound steady at 15.80. EGX 30 plus 0.18% year to date. Nigerian all share plus 4.66% year to date. It's given up half its gains. <clears throat> 
Ghana issued a $750 million tranche, which amortizes and has an average life of 40 years at 8.875%, making it the highest yielding sovereign dollar bond so far this year. I think that's a screaming buy, all things considered. Based on education and infrastructure metrics, Ghana increasingly looks like Korea somewhere in the 1960s and getting 40 years of exposure to that scenario at 9% yield is very interesting, Charlie Robertson. I agree with him. Ghana said in September 2018 that it planned a century bond in dollars. It didn't happen. It did issue a $1 billion 2051 instrument at 8.95% six months later. The yield on that dropped 12 basis points to 8.66%. That's another buy. Ghana Stock Exchange is minus 2.56% year-to-date. Qatar Airways is to buy Rwanda Airways stake to gain an African foothold. Purchase a 49% stake in Rwanda Air. Investing in Rwanda Air after identifying Africa as a market with significant potential. Akba al Baka, its chief executive officer, said. Um, Qatar Airways agreed in December to acquire a 60% stake in Rwanda's new Bugacera International Airport lo located south of Kigali, where an existing hub is at full capacity. As part of the deal, the Gulf carrier will help build and run the $1.3 billion facility. It will be a very efficient hub in a very stable country in the heart of Africa, he said. Um, Baka praised China's response to the coronavirus uh, outbreak, saying the Asian nation is doing a fantastic job in dealing with the epidemic, while suggesting that the global reaction has been out of proportion. The executive said he plans to attend next week's Singapore air show regardless of the outbreak and won't be wearing a face mask. I think it's a very shrewd trans transaction on both President Kagame and uh, Sheikh Tamim's side. Kagami made an investment uh, in a very competitive business, and he's now equity. You know, he's now taking some chips off the table. He's brought in a really strong partner. They're going to be a fierce competitor, and probably outcompete both Ethiopian and Kenyans. Kenya sees no conflict in pursuing close ties with both the U.S. and China and has no interest in being drawn into some proxy war, said President Kenyatta in Washington. Trump could send a formal notice to Congress as early as next week, paving the way for negotiations on a comprehensive, high-standard agreement with Kenya, said Scott Eisner. Um, Richard Neal, who hosted a bipartisan meeting with Kenyatta on Wednesday, signaled support for a new U.S.-Kenya trade pact, but said it would require measures to enforce workers' rights, environmental protections, and good governance. A U.S.-Kenya free trade agreement would be the first such pact signed by Washington with a country in sub-Saharan Africa and only the second FTA with any African country. An FTA was signed with Morocco in 2004. We don't want to be forced to choose. We want to work with everybody, and we think there is an opportunity for everybody, Kenyatta told an event hosted by the Atlantic Council. Support African solutions to challenges facing the continent, he told American institutions. The Building Bridges Initiative is a homegrown solution for a divisive political culture, says Kenyatta, saying... He wants to preempt escalation of no hold barred political competition, strengthen the centre through inclusivity, deliver bold reforms. Everybody wants a great deal for themselves, and I believe that if we're able to look at it from that perspective, there is room enough for all of us. Kenya government's decision to start talks on a bilateral trade agreement with the USA on the eve of the African uh, Free Trade Agreement coming into force will undermine implementation of landmark agreement. This is the Afrexin Bank Chief Economist, uh, Fofak Hippolyte. 5,000 boxes of medical supplies donated by overseas Chinese in Kenya occupied the front cabins of a flight from Nairobi to Guangzhou as the cargo was full, Global Times. 
As I said, I have to assume that coronavirus is already in Africa, but just not diagnosed. That's a racing certainty. And I think what Africa's problem is going to be the same as the Chinese problem. Diagnosis will be months too late. Uh, President Kenyatta, Kenya to evacuate students trapped in China. <coughs> uh, Kenyatta said Nairobi was putting in place stringent measures to ensure the virus does not enter Kenya. We're also working because we have got a good number of our students there to see how we can support them and find out how we can also, when they do come and insist they are coming, ensure that they're put in quarantine for the required 14 days. From a friend who flew back to Nairobi last night, JKIA is the one airport from my whole trip of five African countries that does not have any coronavirus precautions, no forms, officials in masks, temperature checks, gloves, health warning signs, nothing. Kenyan pundit. Nairobi all shares minus 0.44% this year. The NSC20 is minus 1.7% this year. Thank you for stopping by.